Are you feeling stuck playing this game? Don't really know how to advance? And prisoners breaking out literally every other second? Don't worry, this guy will help you. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel here, and in this video, I'll explain the ins and outs of my prison so you guys are able to get a clear view of the game to understand it better. Keep in mind, this game, even in this little beta stage, is pretty complex, so I recommend watching this a few times just for all the information to sink in. So yeah, let's get started. To boil this game down into a few simple sentences, what this game is about is about is taking care of the needs of the prisoners to get more money. You only advance your prisoners when you have all your needs met. This is because the prisoners only start drilling holes when their needs are not met and can function perfectly fine when all their needs are met. I will now go through all the needs. Bedding, in my opinion, is the most essential need as prisoners immediately dig if they can't find a normal bedding spot for them. When you first start off, take advantage of the cheap war beds. They're only 15 bucks and are able to house prisoners. But they take up some unnecessary space in the long run, so use bunk beds in the future. Bunk beds are literally incredible be important. They basically allow two prisoners to sleep in the same bed, saving up on space. You could have 20 prisoners on this small chunk of land, which is already like one fourth of the max prisoners that you can get in this game. Make sure to prioritize this before all else before you start expanding. Exercise equipment is one that really hurts your bank because of how expensive it is. $150 for one piece of equipment doesn't come cheap considering you need a lot of them. A general rule for the number of exercise equipment you need is roughly around 60% of your prison population, but sometimes you definitely need more. If you have 50 prisoners, you need roughly around 30 pieces of exercise equipment to keep them happy. And sometimes they do complain, but you have around the 60% rule, they shouldn't be digging holes or anything like that. The weight bench and the treadmill literally has no difference whatsoever, so you shouldn't really be too fussy about which piece of equipment you should take. At the very start of the game, food really isn't a problem. You can get by without a chef for the first few prisoners. And the kitchen that you get at the beginning of the game is actually pretty capable of sustaining quite a lot of prisoners. You have to care about the food tables, the buffet, and the kitchen equipment. Every dinner table carries 4 prisoners a buffet carries 11 prisoners and generally you will want to have one chef for every 10 to 15 prisoners to keep yourself on top of things. Lunch and picnic tables don't really make a difference. I pick picnic tables just because they look nicer. I like what the description says. You're perfectly welcome to putting picnic tables inside and lunch tables outside. Next thing is the toiletries that you have to take care of. Shower times are where a lot of breakouts happen. The shower heads which are $45 actually are used more than people think. The number of prisoners and the number of shower heads need to be equal. If you 20 prisoners, you need 20 shower heads to keep them happy. However, they aren't really that expensive. $45 isn't a lot, but the amount of space they might consume, also including stuff like toilets and sinks, is going to take quite a large chunk of your space, especially when you're starting out. Workers are a crucial part of the game. You quickly have to start paying workers to govern your prison with you. Every worker you employ needs you to put in some money up front and you paying an hourly wage to every one of them. Guards are the most crucial though. You will have to hire guards literally minutes into your playthrough. A general rule to follow is one guard for every five prisoners. They're responsible for finding holes for you to patch up, keeping the prison secure, and making sure riots don't happen. Every guard also requires a desk space for them to operate properly. They're also the cheapest, with 50 bucks up front and $5 an hour. Chefs are also pretty important. They're responsible for cooking meals for the prisoners and are even more expensive, with 100 up front and 13 an hour. However, you don't have to hire as many of them as guards, as you only need like what, one chef for every 5th, 10 to 15 prisoners to stay safe. They will also need kitchen equipment like ovens and refrigerators to operate properly. Generators and repairmen on the other hand do not need any external items for them to function, but the drawback is that they're the most expensive. A general is $500 upfront and $20 an hour. Quite a significant bump honestly. They clean the spills around the prison and you need more of them as you expand your prison to stay clean, however I don't really know if they're even useful or not. In my whole experience playing this game, I've not seen a dude complain about the cleanliness once, so I'm not too sure. Repairmen are the most expensive though, with $550 upfront and $22 an hour. They repair holes, which is great as when your prison expands. Unlike the other prisoners though, you generally don't need repairmen until like mid-game levels. Also, make sure to keep track of their wages. If their wages exceed the amount of money you get from prisoners per hour, you actually start losing money. This has happened sometimes, so only hire when you absolutely have to. Vehicles, in my opinion, are a less important aspect of the game. You could theoretically finish the game without even spending a single dollar on vehicles, but it would be a very tedious process. They're also super expensive, sitting at $3,000 and $10,000. So unless you want to splash some Robux, those are your only options. For me, I recommend getting the long police car once you're in mid-game levels and the SWAT car once you have a pretty sizable prison. You can also 
AFK grind and get the cards like that, although it will take a while. There are two flaws that you can do in this game, it just gives you more space in general. However, I recommend expanding outwards first to $1000 plots before even thinking about second floor. If you don't have any Robux for the game pass but want to expand, then the second floor will probably be very appealing to you as it basically creates more space for you. The end game is 85 prisoners, that's the upper limit right now. If you achieved it, then good job. You have essentially beaten the game at this point, but it will take days of grinding for you to accomplish this task, and it's a very tedious process to keep increasing your prisoners. Before we end off, I'm gonna give you some quick fire tips to finish off the video. Remove the shrubbery surrounding your prison, this will give you some extra cash for you to work with. When you start off with a fresh save, make sure to run and get 3 prisoners from the get go. The starter prison hat with no changes is fully capable of handling 3 prisoners, so make sure to use it to the fullest. The two methods of escaping that the prisoners can do is just by running away because there's a gap in the walls or through digging holes. Them straight up running away can only happen if one part of the prison is exposed, so it is rare. Digging holes only happens when your needs are not met, they will explicitly say out what they're lacking beforehand. Prisoners will have to dig at the same spot 3 times for the hole to be wide enough for them to escape. Sometimes a red flag will appear above the hole, although I do not know the reason why. This is stage 1, this is stage 2, and this is stage 3. So yeah, this is it, the complete starter guide for all my prison. All you need to know about this game in one video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.